What's up Foundation Nation? Today we are doing a review of maybe the most popular disc of all time, maybe one of my favorite discs of all time, the Rock from Innova, the OG Rock. This is um, not the Rock 3 review. Um, we can make that a separate review, but this is just the Rock. Uh, so this disc is made in a few different plastics, but typically sold in KC Pro and in DX plastic from Innova. So we have both those molds. We also have one of each that's a little bit more seasoned um, in each of those plastics to give a good, um, descriptive, well not descriptive, good visualization of how they fly. Um, so I'm gonna basically, we're gonna throw these, Hunter and I, on a few different angles. We're gonna just talk to you a bit about the rock and realistically just explain to you why we think this is just such a great mid-range because ultimately this is my favorite mid-range of all time and I know Hunter loves it too. Um, and hopefully kinda portray why this disc is so unique in what it's able to do. But uh, we're just gonna get right to it, start throwing. Um, I'm gonna start by just trying to rip them out kinda flat. I'll go with the uh, KC Pro. This is the brand new KC Pro Rock, fresh off the shelf. Um, so we'll see how it flies. Yeah, there you go. I, uh, I gave that one maybe a tad of Anheuser out of my hand, so it had to kind of flight out initially. But as you can see, a few things to notice there. Very straight disc with a nice reliable finish. That's what the beaded mid-range will give you. Um, also, because it has enough stability, I was able to, all my release that comes out of my hand with a little bit of Anheuser, a disc that doesn't have a lot of integrity might burn over a little bit. That rock quickly levels itself out, goes dead straight, and then fades at the end. The rock also goes very far. It's listed as a four speed, but that one really jumped out of my hand. And like the rock typically glides a ton. They always have um, a little bit of dome as you can see on this one it's season they have a little bit of shoulder and dome this one's not even too much but they do come a lot of times with more dome this one uh, was in my bag for a while uh, i'm going to give it a similar line try to throw it kind of flat this one i expect to turn a little bit because it's been seasoned over the course of i don't know six or seven months or so So I actually ended up throwing that almost identically as far as the line I gave it, where I tried to throw it flat, I gave it maybe an ounce of Anheuser, and you can see that one just kind of wanted to pan a little bit longer to the right before falling out. But another thing to notice is, you know, the Rock is a disc, just the traditional Rock, not the Rock 3, obviously, is typically sold in a baseline plastic. Um, but even in that KC plastic, which is kind of a premium baseline, that disc has been seasoned for quite a while, and still I can rip on it like I just did, even give it a little bit of Anheuser, and there's a little bit of headwind, and it's still going dead straight, maybe panning a little bit and then fading a little bit at the end. It's a very consistent disc and a disc that has a nice workability to it, to where you can have it in your bag for a long time, and the flights are going to slowly change. It's not something that's gonna abruptly change on you. If you do wanna rock the changes a little bit quicker, we have DX plastic for that. Um, DX plastic is gonna beat in a little bit faster. This one is fresh, brand new to show you what a brand new DX rock will fly like. Um, this will have just as much overstability realistically um, as any rock as long as you get them in a heavier weight. This one's max weight. Pretty similar to the KC one. Uh, that one, the headwind picked up a little bit, so you saw it kind of turn initially, but it was able to fight out at the end. Once again, just a really straight flying disc. Um, I'm throwing these pretty hard, probably like 85 to 90%, um, and they're just going dead straight now. This disc uh, we have here, this one is a DX rock that has been seasoned the most of the ones we have here. Um, this is one that I will expect to turn quite a bit when I throw it flat like I've been throwing these with some height. Um, this should get a nice long turnover I imagine, but this will kind of give you an idea of what a rock can beat up into. And remember there is a little bit of headwind, not a ton. Yeah, as you can see that one has lost its integrity, so throwing it with a little bit of Anheuser with that headwind pretty immediate turnover. You'll see that disc thrown on hyzer, that's realistically where it's gonna be useful. But just to show you that rocks do eventually beat into quite an understable disc. I mean, you saw me throw a pretty similar line with the other rocks and they held very easily into wind. Whereas if you beat them in long enough, they will be at quite understable to where you can throw a really cool hyzer flip, um, flip up pushing hyzer lines, all kinds of stuff. It's a very versatile disc. So we're gonna throw a few more angles. Hunter's gonna toss it on hyzer, we're gonna do forehands. I'm gonna throw some big anhyzers and we'll show you what he can do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it the uh, brand new KC Pro Rock a toss here. Um, 
I'm gonna just kind of throw it. I'm not really gonna focus on any angles or anything. We got a little bit of a headwind out here. It's a little slick. Uh, so just keep that in mind. The headwind, the slick is for me to keep in mind so I don't fall. Um, but we'll see what it does. All right, so a little bit of a hyzer angle, low angle. Um, it just kind of held it and didn't really want to flip up at all. So this is like a slightly seasoned one. We'll see what it does. We'll put some hyzer on it. Hopefully it's about the same angle. There you have it. That was a pretty close angle. Uh, and that's kind of, to me, what I really love about KC Pro Rocks is they are baseline. We're going to throw the DX DX Rock next, the other other baseline. Um, but it's like a premium baseline, which I think is kind of getting overshadowed on the market a lot right now. It's something where you can hit a lot of trees, you can get a lot of nicks in it, but it still takes a while to get that flip up out of it. Part of that is the rock mold, um, but a big part of that is the KC Pro plastic or in other brands like CT Plastics, a good example too. Uh, classic Hard would be a similar example as well where that like high-end premium plastic, it just takes a little bit longer to get the edge knocked off or high-end baseline plastic, sorry. Uh, but we'll go ahead and throw the DX one and then we'll throw the beat up DX one as well. About the same flight. And now we'll see this beat up one. Um, this one definitely seems to be a little bit more seasoned, but the rim's in pretty good shape. If you're ever looking at a U section, that's really what you wanna pay attention to is the rim and the bead with rocks. Um, so I'm not expecting this one to be like crazy, crazy flippy, uh, but we should get some flip up out of it. Yeah, so I grip locked it. As you probably saw, I grip locked it a little bit off my line, um, but the line I ended up throwing it on with that little bit of hyzer, it was able to get up to flat. So it didn't get all the way up and over. Um, so that's a nice like seasoned rock. So DX is gonna get you there quicker. KC Pro is gonna get you there slower, but then stay there longer on that seasoned rock flight. Uh, but we'll go throw at a few more angles as well. So you saw Hunter kind of throwing the discs on hyzer release. Uh, I'm gonna now show an hyzer release starting uh, with this KC Pro rock right here. Um, a brand new rock. This is actually a disc, I, I typically, you know, Hunter likes to throw a lot of discs on hyzer. Um, I'm more of a guy who likes to release discs flat a lot of times. So what I'll use, I like to use the stability of a brand new uh, rock um, in my favor on the Anheuser line to where I can release it on a little bit at Anheuser and just kind of almost force it over. Cause it is a, you know, a pretty stable disc, brand new or overstable disc, I should say. Um, so if you kind of force it onto that Anheuser angle, you can get these really nice slow pans. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate that here. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I love, you know, there's two ways to go about the Anheuser line. A lot of times you can throw a disc that Heiser flip and then coast. Um, but if you want to get that kind of coasting flight without having the difficulty of a hyzer flip, uh, if you're not great at that, I'm not great at that, you can take a disc that is a little bit overstable, like a brand new rock, force it over on that line, and because the disc wants to fight out, it is going to slowly level out and give you that pan to the right instead of just a turnover that burns over. If you're struggling with burning over cut rollers when you're throwing turnovers, try something more stable, give it a ton of angle, and let it pan out. All right, so now I've got the more seasoned KC rock here. And uh, what I'll do here is this one, I'll be able to release a little more flat to get that line. I won't have to force it over quite as harshly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, the, the rock thrives on every angle, it really does. Uh, but I, on Anheuser is truly when I get to see how, how great it is because that one's seasoned in, it's so easy. You know, you beat in a rock a little bit, you just let it out there flat and hard and just let the disc do the work. It'll give you these nice pans to the right. It's so versatile. Uh, I'm gonna throw the really seasoned one now uh, in the DX plastic. And this one, I may even be able to give a little bit of hyzer to kind of show you what that flip up looks like. So you saw me try to throw this disc on Anheuser. It's not really meant for that, um, unless you're really trying to roll it or throw a huge turnover because it's pretty understable. So this one, I may even get a tiny bit of hyzer um, out to the left hard and I'll let this one kind of work its way over to the right.
Yeah, so there you go. That, basically, what I was able to do with those three discs is the first one, I have to force over a little bit on the Anheuser, pretty steep to get that same flight. The next one, a little seasoned, I throw it kind of flat. And the last one, I maybe give an ounce of hyzer and I let it flip up and get over. But as you can see, the rock in all stages of wear is still able to accomplish the same exact flight, which just shows you how versatile it is. It, it's just a disc that thrives on that kind of angle moving left to right, um, but it also does well pushing right to left. There's not it's really not a whole lot bad I can say about the rock. It's fantastic. It glides a ton. It's forgiving, it's comfortable. It's a great disc. They really, you know, they figured out the rock a long time ago and they just haven't had, haven't had to fix it. It's a great disc. So hopefully you were able to get a uh, pretty good look at the rock. I, yeah, I can't say enough about this mid-range. It is probably, it's a top five favorite disc of mine all time. Probably my favorite mid-range of all time. Uh, there, there's just nothing wrong with it. You know, I, now I will say, disclaimer, uh, the, di the rock is a disc where I think anybody can throw it from brand new to advanced, but to really unlock the potential of this disc, I would say your arm speed needs to be in the realm of, you know, you need to be able to throw this disc, I would say about 240 feet, let's say, 240, 250, to really start to unlock what this disc can do as far as getting it to fly really nice and straight for you. Anything before that, and it's probably gonna fly pretty overstable, not to say it won't be useful, um, but to really unlock what makes this disc special, I do think there is a little bit of a speed cap, um, but once you're able to get this disc up to speed, I mean, there's just endless things you can do with it. For me, they start out with a little bit of stability. Um, you, you can see they kind of fly nice and straight, a little fade at the end. You can put them on hyzer and they'll kind of hold it as Hunter was showing. Um, as you even throw faster than I can, you're gonna see this just start to flip up a little bit, even brand new, but still go dead straight. Uh, I mean, there's a reason this is one of the most popular discs of all time. Um, it's fantastic, it's reliable, it's consistent. Um, I don't know if I've ever bought a KC Rock or DX Rock that didn't fly as I expected it to. It's a very consistent mold. Um, and there's just, it's just so versatile, you know? It's, this is probably my favorite disc to just keep in my bag and let it wear over years and years and years, and you're gonna have that, you know, stable disc, and then it's gonna get a little straighter, and then it's gonna start to get to your turnover disc, and it's just a really cool disc to have in your bag for a long time and see the full life cycle of these things, and they really do last forever. I mean, I have rocks in my bag um, that other people have beat up for me that I found, um, but that have been around for like 15 years, and they're still useful, um, even in the baseline plastic, and, and as Hunter mentioned, the baseline plastic gets overlooked a lot. Um, the grip is fantastic on them. They really don't beat in as quickly as you might think, um, or as people might tell you. They really do have a nice shelf life, um, and I really just prefer them in general. Um, so whenever you can, I'd recommend trying out baseline plastics over the premium stuff because of just the grip of them and the way they season. Um, it just makes it a, a, a nice process. But that's the KC Pro Rock. Um, fantastic disc in general. Uh, make sure to check out all the other disc reviews on the channel and let us know in the comments below what disc you'd like to see us review next. Until then, we'll see you next time.